Hello everyone, my name is Nadeem Khan. Welcome to Uncommon Literature. Today we are going to do Mac Plecno by John Triton. Before we begin, I ask you to kindly subscribe to my channel. And there is one question for you. Have you ever fought with anybody? Obviously, yes. Most of you would say yes, we have fought. And how do you carry on your fight? This is my question to you. Sometimes we fight physically. Sometimes we fight verbally with words. But in 17th century, there were two poets who were fighting with each other by writing great poetry of that time. Their names are John Dryden, of course, and Thomas Shadwell. These two were the contemporary poets and they were good friends, right? They were friends and they had contributed to each other's work a lot. They both had written plays. Shadwell wrote so many plays and Dryden contributed to his plays. But one day there were some issues between them and they kept on growing and it led to the publication of the Medal of John Bayes by Thomas Shadwell. It was a literary attack, a satire on John Dryden. And John Dryden is a great poet. He did not keep quiet. Just after one year, in 1682, he also wrote his reply, that is Mac Flecknoe. Yes, it was an attack on Thomas Shadwell and it is a great insult to anybody. I am not here particularly talking about Thomas Shadwell, but here the way Dryden has insulted Shadwell, nobody else can do it. It is a mock heroic poem. Mock heroic means that it is written in the form of an epic, like the language is grand. The words are, you know, of a very high stature, but the topic is very trivial, very little. It evokes comedy. Okay, it is very comic. When you read it, you will laugh because Dryden is insulting Thomas Shadwell in such a way that we tend to laugh okay this is the whole scenario of it so this was important before we jump directly to the text it is important to know for which this poem was written because we have to understand it in the lines as well we move to the lines of the poem it starts with all human things are subject to decay and when fate summons, monarchs must obey. So, in most of the heroic, uh, you know, mock heroics, you will find that they are written in heroic couplets. Heroic couplets is like two lines rhyming with each other. Okay. It is very easy to read, very easy to, you know, understand as well. So, he starts with the grand, uh, you know, words or the way a an epic is started in the grand manner okay so basically you have to see that all human things are subject to decay like everything which is related to human that is destined to decay one day it will destroy second line and when fate summons monarchs must obey and when the fate is calling the monarchs must obey their cause. Now, what are the characters in this poem? You have to pay attention here. There is one character, Richard Flacno. He is the king and he has retired from his kingship now. He has worked very, very long uh, years. Now he does not want to work anymore. What he wants that he has so many sons and he will give the throne, his seat 
to somebody to his son who is like him the most basically he is looking for the son who is a bigger fool than he himself is so he is looking for a fool who does not have any sense who dwells who lives in the nonsense every time so you have to understand this i am not saying this dryden has written this in this poem you we will read it in lines so the reference to richard flacno here is to an english poet who was of irish origin irish from he was from ireland and he was not a very good poet so that is why this uh, character who is the king in this poem is referred to richard flacno who was a bad poet in the real life you have to understand this so a bad poet who is a king and he is thinking to surrender his kingdom to his son who is worse than him okay in intellect in uh, the you know when it comes to knowledge or intelligence this flacno found who like augustus young was called to empire the king is speaking about himself that like the king augustus of rome i was also co called to this empire and when i was very young so i have worked a lot on this seat and i don't want to work any more here i just want to give it to somebody else this is the uh, saying in these two lines in prose and verse was owned without dispute through all the realms of nonsense absolute so in the next two line the king is speaking that i have governed this land which is full of nonsense in prose as well and in verse as well verse is poetry prose is any kind of writing for example essays novels and like this so in essays or in poetry we don't have any intelligence we don't have any intellectual person who can write good literature and i have been the king of this realm okay this aged prince now flourishing in peace now i am aged now he is calling himself a prince now flourishing in peace now i want to live with peace i don't want to you know handle this anymore and blessed with issue of a large increase now he is talking about his uh, so many sons when he is saying i am blessed with issue of large increase this means that i have so many sons worn out with business like i'm i'm tired of business now i don't want to work on this throne on this seat of the king anymore did at length debate to settle the succession of the state and i had a very long argument i debated with myself about the next king the successor for this throne and pondering which of all his sons was fit to reign and wage immortal war with wit now you have to understand these two lines he pondered he thought very carefully pondering means thinking deeply he thought that out of all his sons who, who is fit to reign who is fit to reign means rule who is fit to rule and wage immortal war with wit did you understand this i i think so i also explain that he said that i am thinking very deeply that out of all my sons the son who will come at this seat he will be continuously fighting with the wit fighting with the wit basically a kind of war with the wit wit here means intelligence so immortal war with wit meaning that somebody who does not have any kind of intelligence okay wage immortal war wage means to start a war an immortal war which is never going to end with wit wit means intelligence so i hope you are able to understand it now cried it is resolved and suddenly after pondering over so long a time he suddenly cried cried means shouted 
it is resolved resolved means it is solved now for nature pleads that he should only rule who most resembles me now the nature has requested me the, basically the universe the universe has conspired that the only son who will rule this kingdom is the one who resembles him the most who is like him the most i told you this in the beginning itself okay so this is the end of the 14th line next we move to the next line shed well alone my perfect image bears now there is uh, the name in some texts it is only written sh then dash dryden actually published this work anonymously without any name of the author and i think in the beginning text he did not write completely shed well he just write he just wrote uh, sh then the a dash so whenever this is there you have to understand he is talking about shed well so shed well alone my perfect image bears so in the next line itself he says that out of all my sons shed well is the only one who bears like who has the complete image of myself who is just like me perfectly mature in dullness from his tender years read it smile and laugh if you can understand it or i am here to explain it to you he is saying that he has from his childhood matured in dullness always he has been a dull fellow he wants to say this in the first line he is saying shed well alone my perfect image bears in the next line he says that he has grown up in dullness shed well alone of all my sons is he who stands confirmed in full stupidity i don't know this is praising or this is insulting or both at the same time you read and you also try to solve this he is saying that shed well alone of all my son is he who stands confirmed in full stupidity meaning there is no doubt that out of all my sons shadwell is the one who is always into full stupidity okay we move further i hope i am able to explain this poem to you line wise with each word and you have to understand that in this poem this is i think 218 lines poem and some lines will make direct you know meaning to you and some would be just description or some additional details so if you don't understand some lines of this poem don't worry the major lines you will definitely understand the the plot line the you know the lines which will carry this poem forward you will definitely understand it it may occur that you would not be able to understand some lines so you just you just can just read it in non detail you just don't have to go into the depth of them just read them and understand them and move further we start with the 19th line the rest to some faint meaning make pretense but shadwell never deviates into sense okay the you know parade of insults has begun he is saying that to rest of my sons some kind of faint meaning of sense sometimes comes okay but shadwell never deviates into sense shadwell is the only one who never goes into sense all the time he is ultimate nonsense stupid person some beams of wit on others soul may fall strike through and make a lucid interval but shadwell's genuine night admits no ray his rising fogs prevail upon the day so these four lines are talking about that you know on other suns some kind of intellect some kind of ray of intelligence sometimes may fall upon but the kind of darkness shadwell is in no light can ever break that darkness for shadwell 
सो शेडवेल इज इन कंप्लीट डार्क ऑफ इग्नोरेंस इग्नोरेंस मीन्स वेन यू डोंट नो एनी थिंग ओके सो सम बीम्स ऑफ विट बीम्स मीनिंग यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड बीम्स ऑफ लाइट सो हियर बीम्स ऑफ विट ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस ऑन अदर सोल्स मे फॉल strike through and make a lucid interval so on other sun some kind of you know short interval for a short while they may talk about sense but not shadwell but shadwell's gen one night admits no ray shadwell is it living in a kind of night which does not admit any kind of you know ray his rising fogs prevail upon the day and his fog his fog this fog is of ignorance of stupidity this fog in which shadwell is living is increasing day by day which is prevailing his day day means the sunlight sunlight is not able to come inside the life of uh, shadwell because he is covered with the darkness of his stupidity i i hope you are able to understand this imagery we move to the 25th line besides his goodly fabric fills the eye and seems designed for thoughtless majesty so you have to understand the 25th line like this besides his goodly fabric fills the eye basically in this line he is calling shadwell fat he is a fat fellow goodly fabric means somebody who is fat fills the eye fills the eye meaning when you are looking your vision is completely filled with that person he is so big and he is so fat that the entire vision is covered with that one person only and seems designed for thoughtless majesty and he is designed for thoughtless majesty basically majesty is related to the king and thought thoughtless you can understand that this person is only designed for ruling without thinking or using his brain okay we move further thoughtless as monarchs oaks that shade the plain here he will talk about that the king is as thoughtless as the monarch oaks monarch oaks a kind of tall trees which are standing on some kind of ground some meadows without having any connection with the area surrounding them similarly this king has been in his rule thoughtless as monarch oaks that shade the plain same line i explained it to you and spread in solemn state sponly rain sponly rain meaning that i am also a kind of monarch who is like a tree and i am just there not playing any active role but i am just spreading spread in solemn state sponly rain sponly here means passive rain rain means rule so here he is talking about that i have no active role to play in my kingdom Haywood and Shirley were but types of the. Here we have the real references of two poets of that time. Their names are John Haywood and James Shirley. They both were not very well acclaimed. They were not good poets or playwrights. So you have to understand here. That is why. So you notice all the worst. you know or bad writers or poets are included in this poem just to highlight the bad poetry or you know to insult shadwell so there is no reference to any big writer or poet only the poets are given here who were not very well reputed in their times so he is saying that haywood and shirley were also of your types thou last great prophet of tautology okay so here uh, they are saying that you are the last prophet of tautology tautology here means that when you give you know extra obvious uh, you know exclamation or explanation of anything for example when you are speaking about something and you are keep on explaining it with obvious uh, examples the person has understood it but you are again and again giving more and more explanation for something which is very obvious even i a dunce of more renown than they 
so now in this two lines he will talk about himself that i was uh, sent i was you know made the king before you only to prepare the kingdom or prepare the path for you i was a fool and a king of this kingdom but i came here only to prepare a way for you i am nothing in front of you so he is saying uh, even i a dunce of more renown than they so he is saying dunce meaning a big or stupid person he is a stupid person he is calling himself that i am more renown than they they here meaning haywood and shirley he is saying that i was sent before you but to prepare thy way your way okay i hope you are able to understand with me now we move to the next line and coarsely clad in norwich drugget came so you have to understand some words here drugget is a kind of rough woolen fabric and norwich is a city in norflok county which was the origin place of shadwell so you have to understand that wearing some rough woolen fabrics shadwell came from norwich to teach the nations in thy greater name so he is saying that i came like he is talking about himself i came from norwich wearing some woolen clothes to teach the nations in thy greater name i wanted to come here before you and i wanted to tell the greater name in foolishness obviously to the people before you come here and become their kings my wobbling lute the lute i willom strung so you have to understand here he is talking about uh, an instrument it's kind of a small guitar i have pasted a picture here you can have a look so he is saying i used to play my lute to the king of portugal so he is saying that the lute i belong belong here means once so he is saying he is remembering that i used to play the instrument before the king john of portugal the first and was but the prelude that to that glorious day he is saying that i was singing or i was playing some instrument before the king of portugal and i was there only to highlight to prelude that glorious day when you would come here and become the king when thou on silver thames thames you understand it's a river in london so when thou on silver thames did cut thy way when you would come on a boat floating on the river thames making your way cut thy way meaning making your way with so with well timed oars before the royal barge barge is a kind of flat boat which was used to carry heavy burden so you can understand he called shadwell fat earlier and now he is calling him uh, you know sailing or traveling in a barge swelled with the pride of thy celestial charge so this bar this boat is swelled with pride now the you know basically the boat is very proud that he the boat is carrying the celestial charge the celestial being celestial means somebody who has come from the sky and big with him commander of an host the like was never in epsom blankets toast so basically here he is talking that when shadwell is coming on a royal boat in river thames he is playing his lute and all the uh, you know people in the boat they are singing for him and they are oaring they are playing the oars of the boat along with his singing and the playing of that instrument instrument and this kind of scene was not even shown in the play written by shadwell himself that is epsom wells okay so this epsom blanket stores this uh, terms are taken for the reference of his play that was epsom well me thinks i see the new arion sail so when this shadwell is coming the king thinks that the new arion is coming arion was a greek mythological character he was a poet and musician and once he was riding in a ship 
and when the you know other sailors decided to kill him and rob him out of his wealth he was permitted to sing one last song when he sang one last song after doing this he jumped into the water where he was carried and saved by dolphin who carried him to shore so this reference is given to shadwell i think this is something positive this is not uh, uh, an insult to him but obviously we can understand the uh, you know comic uh, uh, element here that uh, shadwell who is not a very great uh, poet in this poem is being compared to some great greek mythological character the lute still trembling underneath thy nail so basically shadwell is holding a lute and he is playing the lute the instrument with his nail at thy well sharpened thumb from shore to shore so he is saying when he is playing the instrument the vibration the roughness of that playing you know he does not know basically he wants to say this that you don't know how to play the instrument and the rough the kind of roughness you are using to play that instrument is making the shore of the river thames tremble so both the banks both the shores of the river thames are trembling with vibrations the tremble squeaks for fear the bass is roar so this is what i wanted to tell you that with the sharpness with the harshness roughness of that playing of the instrument the everything around them is shaking echoes from pissing la shadwell call and shadwell they resound from aston hall so pissing la and aston hall are are the real places in london and i think there is not much to take out from these lines so that is why i told you some lines we have to understand in non detailed manner only some some lines we will go in depth but not in the other lines line number 49 about thy boat the little fishes throng so you have to understand the kind of vibration he created by playing that instrument in river Th thames it made the fishes throng like they have come out of the water and they are scared as just like the morning toast that floats along so morning toast has so many meanings some people are calling it the morning bread that the fish are uh, you know floating on the water by the vibration of that lute just as the morning bread or the, the you know the loaves of that uh, breads if you throw them they will come out of that water and float over it some people are also interpreting it in the uh, manner of human waste like human waste of the especially of morning time so you can uh, understand uh, whatever you want to uh, you know re reflect it or relate it with sometimes as prince of thy harmonious band thou wield thy papers in thy threshing hand so what is happening while the people in his boat are singing for him for his welcome and he is playing the lute now he is holding some papers in his hand and he is moving them in order to show them uh, the directions of uh, you know for giving them some instructions for the music it's like that then thou wield thy papers in thy threshing hand saint andre's feet never kept more equal time not even the feet of thy own psyche's rhyme so in the next line he will make a pun a uh, pun is the basically double meaning on some word he will play a pun on the word feet so this there is a character there was a real choreographer his name was saint andre he was a french choreographer and he uh, choreographed one of his plays uh, that is psyche in 1675 and he is saying that the kind of uh, dance he was not able to do you are making uh, all of us do by your instructions and not even the feet of thy own psyche's rhyme 
and he is also you know playing here dryden is playing an insert on the rhyming scheme of the play of shadwell that was psyche he is saying that the rhyming scheme of that uh, play was not good though they in number as in sense excel so just so like tautology they fell so he is saying that obviously they are increasing in number these feet these rhyming everything is increasing but they all fail or fell just like your tautology i have already explained what tautology is and now we move to the next line in that pain with envy singleton force work now seeing you instructing the singers through your hands with papers singleton force work he basically took a oath took an oath that he will never play his lute and sword singleton was a real musician real time musician he will never play his lute and sword in which which he in triumph bore and vowed he never would act valerius more so valerius is a character in one of his plays and he is saying that singleton took this oath that he will not play that character any more after seeing this you know grand majesty of uh, thomas shadwell he got scared here stopped the old good old sir and wept for joy so basically now after a lot of uh, good saying about his son thomas shadwell richard flacno stops and cries out of joy for his son here stopped the old good sir and wept for joy in silent raptures of the hopeful boy so he is crying for his son that he is so talented i am in, impatient that when he will come and become the king and took this uh, you know take this throne from me all arguments but most his plays persuade that for anointed dullness he was made he is saying that whatever argument in this world going on everything you have to put secondary but first thing first that all the dullness whichever present in this world is completely made for my son thomas shadwell so he is completely a fellow who is dull close to the walls which fair agasta bind so here agasta is uh, london this word is used for london here and he is saying that near the walls of london the fair agasta much to fears inclined and this london is you know surrounding in fear what kind of fear was going on at that time there was a kind of fear of popish plot which was a kind of jusets plan to assassinate king charles the second but it was completely inaccurate it turned out to be false ancient fabric raised in form the site there stood of yore and barbe barbican it height so basically what is happening here that around the city of london there is a kind of fortification fortification it's kind of tall walls in order to protect the city from any kind of attack but that barbican that is called barbican it hide barbican it hide hide means it was called barbican so that barbican is a kind of watch tower once it was a watch tower to protect the city but now as the fate ordains as the basically uh, the fate or the destiny of that watch tower of all the pile and empty name remains so out of Uh, all that uh, fortification everything has gone into ruins and all the name is remaining of that place from its old ruins brothel houses rise so and you can understand this is all ruins now and what happens some uh, bad activities or vulgar activities are going on here there are brothel houses which are working from here basically prostitution is going on in these kind of uh, ruins scenes of lewd loves and of polluted joy so last line devotes to the prostitution which is going on in that place so okay so we stop here i will make this poem into three parts 
we have come to the end of the first part i hope you like this video kindly subscribe to my channel share it with your friends and must write to me if you have understood or you have some doubt you can ask me that doubt as well thank you so much